차렷 경례. 태권도 리얼터 people out there. How are you doing? Good morning, John. How Good are morning. you? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we got our maestro here, uh, Mr. P. Sonic. Uh, today, we're going to talk about backup offers. So, Pete, have you seen a lot of backup offers recently? Um, absolutely. And I think it's a really important piece of our current market conditions, John. Um, as uh, I'm sure you're experiencing right now in October 31st of 2020 with our very limited Halloween. What, <laughs> yes, Halloween. Happy Halloween. Uh, um, with us only having about roughly uh, 4,300 homes uh, active in the six counties, which is almost 3 million people. And who knows what our census is going to be. It's probably going to be over 3 million once they get that back. Um, but uh, the market's very, very competitive. Um, and a unique way of winning contracts is winning in second position. Um, and what I think we're starting to see in our current market conditions is because of our limited inventory and because of how aggressive buyers actually have to be to win, John, um, a lot of the buyers aren't really willing to do what they're putting forward in that contract. And three or four days later, I'm seeing them turn around and walk on the deals. Absolutely. So you, as the buyer's agent, uh, should be cognizant of the fact and you should be putting your clients into a backup position. Right. This will put you in a position where you will automatically get a contract Right. if one of these buyers ends up getting cold feet because they went $50,000, $60,000 over asking and agreed to pay the difference in an appraisal to buy this home. I think a lot of the new agents, they're scared. Uh, I, I would like to do that, but how do I do that? I don't know how to do it. And they just stop there and they never take that extra step to talk to their managing brokers or other mentors in the office. And they just, oh, well, I didn't win that multiple offer situation. So I'm just going to go find them another house. Uh, you think that's about 90% of new agents, 95% of new agents? Absolutely, John. And in this competitive market, we really have to look at the way that we're presenting these offers. Um, and especially with guys like your FHA borrowers, your VA borrowers. Um, the thing I coach all my agents, John, is I have a three call rule. Um, and I like to just kind of go over that just really briefly. So you go out and you show that house on Saturday and you're standing in line to get inside. You call the listing agent and you say, Hey, my clients absolutely love this place. Um, how many offers do you have? And the guy's like, well, we're waiting till Monday. We currently have three, um, bring me your highest, and best, you know, um, admit your appraisal, admit your inspection and so forth. So what I've been finding is, um, A, I got my three call rule. So the first call, I always call the agent, ask him, hey, how many offers do you have? Um, what is it that you're looking for in a contract? That's, that's probably the most important sentence because that agent's going to tell you what he wants to see in your Absolutely. offer. Absolutely. Um, additional provisions is a big piece of winning these offers. Um, and that's my first phone call. Mm -hmm. When I get back to my office and I get ready to start writing my offer, I do my second phone call. And that second phone call is recapturing what I talked to that agent about on the first phone call. Hey, Mr. Selling Agent, um, I know that your client needs about a month post occupancy. I just wanted to verify that with you. And again, I'm reiterating the conversation I had with him in the first uh, dialogue. I'm not necessarily doing this for two reasons. Number one is I'm building a relationship with that agent. And I'll tell you why that relationship is important in the backup offer position. And number two, I'm just recapturing the fact that I'm actually putting what I what he wants into that contract. Because you have to remember, this agent's going to be looking at six, seven, maybe 20 offers. Who knows how many they're going to have? So you need to make yourself stand out. And you do that by building a relationship with the agent. You've got to do it in three phone calls. I'm a listing agent oftentimes, John, and I know you are too. How often do we get those offers where we haven't even heard from the agent? Get alone their lender, you know, mm -hmm. not that, that happens. So in that second phone call, I'm talking to that agent. I'm recapturing everything that I talked to him about in the first phone call. And I'm letting him know, hey, I'm actively writing an offer as we speak. Um, hang up the phone, write the contract, get my clients to sign the contract. By the way, please sign your offers before you present them to listing agents. That's a very important thing. I can't tell you how often on the listing side I get an offer that's not even executed. Um, so again, you're not winning any points with that listing agent if that's the type of stuff that you're doing. So that third phone call, I'm calling them as I'm presenting the offer. So I'm sending you the offer. I'm going to call you and I'm going to say, hey, John, 
Um, I really like that house on ABC Street. Uh, my clients absolutely love it. It's a stunning home. I know you're looking at about seven or eight offers. Um, I just wanted to kind of go over some things and recap again what they were looking for in their contract. Let them know that you're sending it. And I think this is the appropriate time to really nail home your lender or the fact that they're cash, uh, presenting that proof of funds and or lender letter. And in this day, your lender really should be picking up that phone and calling the listing agent to kind of discuss your client's financial situation. So again, we're here to build that relationship with the agent. In most cases, when I have a listing, I might have one maximum two or three agents that are going to do the three call thing with me. But I know that that now communicating with that agent, and chances are that listing agent is going to give you some subtle hints of how to win that contract. But awesome. let's say you go out and you put $30,000 over asking, you did the $5,000 appraisal gap and geez, John, you came in third, let's say third place. Okay. I, I don't like third places. I don't like second places. I don't, I don't like, like second place either. But I don't you didn't like first. <laughs> so that's the point. Yep. Um, but awesome. what you did do mm -hmm. is you made your three phone calls. Absolutely. You established that relationship with the listing agent. That listing agent knows that Peep Sotny wrote an offer on John Park's listing. Yes. And I didn't come in first and I didn't come in second. So what do we do, John? Throw up our hands and say, that house isn't going to make it? No, I'm going to think about, uh, can I go back to my job? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gosh, I should really go after some listings instead of buyers, right? I, absolutely. But uh, I just had an agent who did your three call method. Uh, she was in second position and she was 10,000 below the first position and uh, just did exactly what you talked about. And she is now under contract automatically because she did her homework and wrote up the backup offer and got it under contract. So let's go into that right now. So our audience is like, okay, guys, how do I write it? So here we go. Let's share this page. So well, the uh, importance, uh, I'd like to just kind of touch basically on the sure. importance of a backup offer position, John. Yes. Even if you're in third place, fourth place, especially if you have an FHA or a VA borrower that doesn't have a lot of money down, put the verbiage into the backup position because what it's going to do, number one, 95% of agents aren't going to write a backup offer. Yes. So you're probably going to be the only one. This is also why it's important to do this even if you're in like third or fourth place, because you're going to put the backup offer paragraph in two additional provisions. And then if that senior contract terminates, you will automatically go into that next position. Right. It's not the listing agents going to call the top five contracts and then make them bid against each other on round number two. Yes. And what I'm finding is that first offer that wrote $50,000 over asking that promised to pay the entire appraisal they get the offer, they're excited for about a two or three hours. Then they drive home and they go, holy cow, John, can we really afford to go $50,000 over the asking price of that house? So you're getting buyer's remorse almost oh. immediately. Yes. And when Absolutely. you put back a version, uh, back of verbiage into an additional provision of a contract and you get the seller to agree to it, when that buyer buyer number one gets cold feet and terminates their contract, you will automatically go into contract. Absolutely. So here's how to do it. So I've actually cheated a little bit today. I actually pre-wrote this. So this is where, I'm sorry, I'll show you that again. So for the new agents. So you go to, you already wrote an offer, you got rejected, cold, cold water on your face, but you decided I'm going to write a backup offer. So you go to uh, paragraph 30, additional provisions. And CTME has what it call clause, clauses right there. Uh, so if you already have different clauses, this is a good spot to put them in. So you click that. And I, as you can see, I have some other clauses in there. Um, so here you could create your new clause and start typing your clause and save it. So you will save for a long, long time. I have clauses from 2008, as you can see. So anyway, so here I have a pre-made clause. So I marked that one and I'm going to insert it into the contract. Voila, there's, it's already done. So another important thing, mm -hmm. John, with the clauses is uh, mm -hmm. managing agents like myself and you will likely write up some of these clauses. Yes. Um, and that's always a good thing that you're consistent in the way that you write these. 
Yes. Um, that way you're not making things up or no. have bad verbiage in there. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely use your clauses tab. It's a good way to maintain consistency and it's a time saver, obviously. No, this is paragraph with one click of a button. Actually, I, I have two uh, backup position clauses in my clause because this one is actually from that agent uh, from another company. And she gave me the permission to use her clause because I like the way how she put together. Uh, but we're not attorneys. So technically speaking, you should have attorneys write up these backup offer clauses and talk to your managing broker before you use any clauses you want to make sure, like Pete was saying. So let's go into it. So since this starts, uh, buyer is aware that seller has ex upset, accepted a previous offer on the property, first contract. Okay, so it says this contract shall be in first position to the first contract, first backup position. So that's pretty clear. In the event the first contract is terminated, seller shall provide buyer written notice that this backup contract has been placed in first contract position. Is that pretty clear? Yeah, I okay. like the way that you wrote that. Okay, buyer reserves the right to terminate this backup contract at buyer's sole discretion at any time prior to the contract being placed in first contract position. So can you explain that to our audience a little bit, what that, what that means? Well, basically, uh, once the first contract is terminated, John, then the backup offer is automatically going to come into play. Um, when I write my clause, I basically ask that the, the seller provide a notice of termination of the first contract. Mm -hmm. um, the important thing to know is that your contract will automatically start. Yes. So very much like our first class, when we wrote MEC plus dates mm -hmm. into the purchase contract, that's what you're going to want to use yes. um, in these backup offer positions because you don't really know when that first contract is going to terminate. Yes. So that's also another, I think, important point to put in here. Okay. Um, and uh, what, what are you looking for as far as written notice? So typically I just ask for the notice to terminate from the first contract. And once that's produced by the listing agent, sure. Um, then I automatically go into backup position. Sure. So let me finish reading it. So um, at the time prior to contract being placed in first con contract position, all earnest money shall be returned forthwith to the buyer if there was an earnest money already. Uh, such termination shall be effective upon seller's receipt a written notification of said termination. So oh, let's I I jumped a little ahead there. <laughs> you did. You did. Uh, that's okay. So um, sometimes backup offers will have their own earnest money. So you have to put, place that with the title company or the listing company. Um, so, so John, one thing I've noticed with that, mm -hmm. uh, and I just wanted to comment on that. Sure. And what I've actually done in the past is, um, a lot of times, or almost every time, I found that a title company won't collect earnest money from two parties on a transaction. Yes. So if the senior offer has already deposited their earnest money, then the junior offer, when you go to write that earnest money check, it's a very confusing thing at a title company. Right. So what I've actually done in place, um, because I'm a listing agent, and again, talk to your managing agent, because you need to have trust accounts to do this. But I will actually hold earnest money for the contract. Okay. The listing uh, the buyer's agent, selling agent. Right. And you're allowed to do that. You just need to write that verbiage into the into the contract to buy and sell. Mm -hmm. And that's defined in section four. Right. So um, uh, yeah, th that's great. And so, but there's another way to do this. Another way is where I find more common nowadays is they will do notice plus three days for earnest money. So once that notice is given, now you're in the first contract position. Now you, you have to bring that earnest money. The buyer has to bring the earnest money to the title company in three days of that notice. So that that's the way I think a lot of brokers are doing it now. And that's a lot more common. And the nice thing about that, John, is you don't have to put up your client's money mm -hmm. um, to write these backup offers. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind, you could have two or three backup contracts out there. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think there's absolutely anything wrong with that because you're not in a senior position of a contract anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, just make sure that once you do get into a contract that you provide a notice of termination to all of those agents. And that's just as simple as just sending the email 
when it knows to terminate the backup contract. Right. Uh, once it's been executed by both parties. And bear in mind, it says buyer sole discretion. So you're in a backup position. You're under contract. It doesn't mean you stop looking. You go look at other houses. And if, if that buyer likes another house much better, you terminate this backup offer and you could place another offer on another house. So I think this is a no lose situation. This is a win win situation to write write up backup offers, correct? Absolutely. And and again, John, when you're dealing with the difficult buyers, not difficult as far as picky, but the buyers that have limited resources of funds, 3%, 5%, um, if they're FHA or your VA guy who's buying a house with $100, um, you're going to find that you're going to lose a lot of deals. And it doesn't matter the price. On the listing side, I can tell you that I don't always, in, in most cases, I'm actually not picking the highest number. I'm picking the best contract. Yes. And once you've done the three call rule, you've established that relationship with the broker and you've got that FHA borrower and you're the only one still talking to that broker on Wednesday because they already picked the other conventional offer with 20% down, 50 grand over asking. And you say, hey, Mr. Seller, uh, hey, John. You know, my client, he's kind of lost a lot of offers. Would you entertain my, my VA borrower's backup offer position, please? And push that, put this contract into additional provisions. And you know what? They're going to sign it because they want a backup plan. Yeah. And if they sign it, you don't have to go back to that open market. And you're going to get your client with limited funds and resources, homes, um, without them having to, after they got beat in the first first round. Yep. So, so I think it's a very, very important tool and you should definitely be utilizing it. So now after we did the additional provisions language there and for all of our viewers, if you need that language, just email me or text me um, and then I'll get it to you. All right. So let's go to the dates. Where are my dates? So up to section three. I'm getting, uh, I know. So, here, sorry. There you go. <laughs> You're gonna have to use MEC. Um, right. So actually, uh, on on this one, we're gonna use notice. So I'm gonna change this around a little bit. So I'll show you what I mean. So like here for earnest money, notice plus three days. And here we're gonna change that to notice plus seven days. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Absolutely. And I, I've even done it where I've used the MEC and then defined MEC and additional provisions saying that that's the date that the notice of termination is given. Uh, notice plus days is a good one to use as well. However, yeah. I would always encourage everyone, mm -hmm. once you get your backup offer accepted, mm -hmm. I don't think it's a bad idea to just grab an amend extend Oh, we and, always and do that. put in hard dates. Yes, we always um, do that. Mm -hmm. and, and I always encourage that. In fact, I've, I've even put that verbiage into the additional provisions after the paragraph stating mm -hmm. that both buyer and seller will agree to an amend extend that'll have hard dates. Mm -hmm. Reason being is, you know, it's easy to get through notice plus three days. But when you get into the meat of the transaction and mm -hmm. you're starting to interpret what day dates and deadlines and what landed on a holiday and didn't land on a holiday. Mm -hmm. It's just always good practice, in my opinion, to then go into an amend extend and mm -hmm. define the dates once the notice is given. Right. So you, you and I know a young lady named Christine Alejo. Does that uh, name yes. ring a bell? Yes. Does <laughs> ring a bell. <laughs> okay. Uh, she's amazing. I, I, love, I, I love using her. She's my transaction coordinator. So she's so proactive. I got this backup offer in place. And as soon as we did, she did an amendment to change out all the dates so that all the parties will know exactly which dates. So uh, a shout out to Christine. If she's watching this video, we, we, yes. lo we, we love you. <laughs> she, she's my file auditor. I couldn't do it without her. Yeah, we, uh, love, we love having her support. Yes. So you're going to go through your contract dates and, and put in the notice plus dates. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely think that's important. John, if mm -hmm. you don't mind scrolling down just a little bit to section four. Sure. Um, where if let's say you're in a position where you definitely want to do earnest money. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's a larger transaction or 
uh, there's some kind of exchange of currency. Yeah. So in section four, mm -hmm. um, you're going to put your earnest money in 4.3. Yes. So scroll down just a smudge further. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you are going to one more section, 4.3. There we go. Yes. So one of the things here that I discussed is if you do need to hold earnest money for some reason in the transaction and talk to your managing agent of when that would be appropriate, mm -hmm. um, you're going to put earnest money personal check to be held by and I would put selling agent right there. Um, in these cases, I don't like giving my earnest money to title companies. I don't like giving my earnest money to the listing office, mainly because your buyer may want to terminate that contract at any time in their quote unquote sole discretion, right? Yeah. So it's really easy for you to return that earnest money back to your buyer versus having to go to a third party, getting earnest money releases and so forth. I like that. Good suggestion. You always have a good tidbits. <laughs> <laughs> Just trial and error, John. <laughs> so, I, so I think I, I think we're done here, pretty much. Uh, I'm gonna stop the screen share. So, yeah, uh, I think this is a pretty important class. I really encourage all the Tech on the Realtor mentees and subscribers and viewers to really think about putting in these backup offers. I mean, I, I, every house you lose out on a multiple office situation, I say you should do it on every home you lose out. And honestly, John, I could tell you from a listing agent standpoint, we take a lot of listings on our side. Mm -hmm. I bet 50% fall out of contract yep. right now. Yep. And I think it's a lot of it has to do with the uncertainty of that buyer. That buyer has to be super aggressive to get in these deals. They're uncertain when they're writing the contracts because they have hours to make that decision, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe a day or two, or you get the listing agent that wants to wait till Monday and you're up against 13 contracts. Um, but I think the most important thing to take away from this class is, is two things. Number one, build the relationship with the listing agent. Three call rule. Talk to them three times before that contract comes out, even if it's a voicemail, okay? Still make your three calls, make your lender make that call. And then when you don't get it, make sure you have additional provision backup contract. Um, you will win offers by doing this. Yeah, I think I did a few class before. The critical situation like this, your lender partners are so critical. How they present themselves to the listing brokers. Have, they've already been pre-approved. They have been on, through underwriting. That All the conditions have been met. Income bank statements, tax returns, I have it all. I reviewed it all. All we need is just your contract and we're pretty much done with the offer. I mean, if that comes from the lender as a listing broker, you're like, yeah, let's go. I, I like that. That's offer. the one. Yeah, exactly. that's the one. So it's have a great relationship with listing brokers. I agree. But number two, have a great relationship with your lending partners. Absolutely. And backup offers, like John and I said, very few agents are doing them. So you are going to set yourself apart. And you don't necessarily have to be the second highest offer. No. You could be in the middle of the pack. Mm -hmm. If you can convince that listing agent to present that backup offer, you're going to be the only one talking to that listing agent on Wednesday and Thursday after it's gone under contract. And he might give your FHA and VA borrowers a shot at it. Yeah. So this, uh, this agent, because she wrote a backup offer on my listing, I think she's going to make about $20,000 commission. Hey. Not a bad day at the office, John. That's a nice day. Uh, so write backup offers, people. <laughs> <laughs> I think we said that a few times, right? <laughs> yeah, but that's so important. Write up the backup offer. Don't be lazy. I hate realtors that are lazy. Do you like lazy realtors? No, John. Um, and uh, as you know, I'll be here at 6 a.m. to open the office doors every day. So. There's no such thing as lazy and success. Um, I think it was one of our brokers in the office. He said, I want to be the first one in and last one out. You know what? If you have that mentality, I think you're going to succeed in this business. Absolutely, John. The harder you work, the luckier you get. <laughs> <laughs> well, the smarter you work. That's why we're writing backup offers. Yep. Harder you work, smarter you work. Absolutely. Hey, thanks for the glass great great class again pete i love doing these classes with you you're my maestro my mentor my teacher 
Uh, so we're going to sign out. Uh, you have a wonderful week, and we'll do another one next week, okay? Thank you. Chariot, 경례.